if you're not using a password manager at this point, I don't know what you're doing with your life. Now, I've been using Vault Warden or Bitwarden, depending on when you catch me, for the last couple of years now, and I've even made a video about it that will be linked in the description down below. Last month, Flashpoint found a vulnerability in Bitwarden that was covered over on Forbes, and it states, newly published research from threat intelligence experts Flashpoint has suggested that Bitwarden falls short in one particular area the auto-filling of credentials within an embedded iframe. However, more importantly, in my opinion anyway, the Flashpoint researchers found that, unlike some other password manager extensions they examined, Bitwarden would fill an embedded iframe if the autofill on the page load option was enabled, asking for login credentials even if they're from different domains. So just to kind of re-explain that a little bit. So let's say you've got site A.com and site B.com. Let's say you're a member of, you have credentials for site A.com. And let's say somebody, some bad guy put, or was managed to embed site B.com into site A.com um, and had a, you know, a login form and that sort of thing that asked for username and password. Because of the way Vault Warden or Bitwarden was configured at the time, if you had autofill enabled, it would take your site A.com credentials and uh, autofill them into the iframe to site B.com um, and you would never know as the user uh, what was going on there or how your account was compromised um, because this is just something that shouldn't happen. And luckily, per this article, they are currently working to fix that. Now, of course, this got me thinking about looking into a new password manager for my own use. And recently I've seen several different creators making content about a password manager called Passbolt. Just a quick interjection to remind you that if you find my content interesting or would like to help support the channel, you can do the easiest thing in the world and just click the subscribe button down below. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways though, you can become a channel member, join my Patreon, or get access to my content without ads for as little as $1 a month over at dbtech.fans. Now, I've also had a few people ask me about making a video about Passbolt, so I spent some time looking into it, and overall, it really does look great. After digging around on the site and whatnot, I spent a few minutes going through the setup process, and it was surprisingly easy to get set up in Docker. It was just as easy as deploying a Docker Compose and attaching a URL to it to get it up and running. The simplicity of getting it set up was actually really nice. So after playing with it off and on for about a month or so, I've got some thoughts that I want to share with you about why I'm not sure if I can recommend Passbolt for the average self-hoster or home labber. Now look, I just want to be clear here. I'm not saying that Passbolt is a bad product. I just think that it's maybe not a great option for those people who are hosting a password manager for their friends and family. So first, all of the users who are on your site or server can see all of the other users that are on your site and server. And this isn't something that's just gone unnoticed and has flown under the radar. This is something that I was able to find forum posts going back to 2008 on where people just wanted the ability to turn this off. Now, more than just being able to see the other user accounts, all users can see when other users were last logged in and when they last updated something in their password vault. Why? I, I, I don't understand why that's important. And I found a forum post that says, this is to enable sharing entries. People need to be able to see their details and public key verification. Now look, I've been using a password manager of some sort for like a decade now, and I've never seen anything like this on, whether it was a, a, a commercial password manager or a self-hosted password manager. I've never seen this. It's always been a case of if I wanted to share a password with somebody, I just put in their email address and shared it. I didn't pick one from a list of other users on my server. The second reason that I'm not sure I want to recommend this for the average home labber or, or self hoster or whatever is because you have to have the browser extension installed on your browser in order to use the web app. If you don't have the browser extension installed, you can't access your vault via the web. Now there is an FAQ about this topic over on their website, but basically it's because the extension renders the login page in the browser. Also, the extension stores your authentication data and handles authentic authentication locally, and then logs you in via API rather than actually sending your password over the internet to the server for authentication. And look, I, I get it. Like, I understand why that might be a, a great security thing, but this isn't super user-friendly for the average user. So reason number the third, as Linus would put it, if you sign out of your account and they go to sign back in, you have to go through a password recovery process that requires a PGP file that you download when you first set up your account. Even if you know your password and just wanna log into your account on a new browser or, or on the same browser, and again, you have to have the extension installed, 
but you have to have the PGP file to decrypt your information in order to be able to do anything with your account. And that's again, not super friendly. If I'm out doing something and, and I need to log into my account to grab a password, I have to have a browser available with the extension installed and have my PGP key stored on a USB thumb drive or on my person somewhere so that I can then upload it to log in to a new location. And that is not super user friendly for the average home labber or self hoster. Kind of spinning off of the, the password thing here, the passphrase is stored on your device and is never sent to the server. So changing your password will only change it on that one device. And if you have multiple browsers configured, the passphrase will need to be changed in all places individually. So if you've got three browsers logged in and you go to browser A and log in and have to reset your password there, if you change that password, it's not going to change it anywhere but right here on this one place. It's not going to affect any of your other logins. So that could honestly be really confusing for a lot of people. Now I will say that Passbolt does have a very decent mobile experience that does allow you to have multiple accounts on your device and you don't need to fuss around with a PGP key and that sort of thing to get logged in. You can also add a fingerprint authentication to get access to your password faster when you're on the go. And what's kind of cool about this is you can have multiple accounts signed in on a, on a single um, mobile device. So you can just toggle back and forth between them without any of the nonsense of PGP keys and things like that if you need to switch accounts. Now I will say Passable does have two-factor authentication uh, that's very, very easy to add. Uh, there are three different types of two-factor authentication available. Uh, first, we've got time-based one-time passwords. We've got YubiKey and we've got Duo. Now I've only used YubiKey, but I can say that it's super, super simple to set up as an admin. All you need to do is head over to Yubico's website to get an API key, enter your email address, plug in your compatible YubiKey and touch the gold pad on it. And this will fill in the information about your YubiKey. Now you can click the submit button and you'll get a client identifier and a client secret. Now make sure to copy those and head back over to your Passbolt instance, log in as an admin, and then enter the client identifier and the secret key in the appropriate boxes, click save. And then at that point, individual users can use their own individual two-factor authentication YubiKeys to, uh, to help protect their account. They did a really good job on making that very, very simple. And I do appreciate that about it. One other thing that you will need is a, is a mail server uh, so that you can get information you need as far as password recoveries and that sort of thing. Something to be aware of though, is the default email settings. By default, all of the available email notifications are set to the on position, which means every time you change anything or log in or whatever, there's going to be a really really good chance that you and or the admin are going to get an email. So when I exported my password list from Vault Warden to be imported into Passbolt, I received literally hundreds of emails. I got one email for each new password that was imported. The thing is, as a user, there's nothing you can do about this. You can't go into the user account and disable email notifications on a per user basis. You can only do this as an admin and it's a global setting either on or off. Now you can adjust certain things about which emails should be sent. You know, should uh, users get uh, an email every time they update their password or every time they you know add a new password or whatever you can, you can, kind of adjust that as an admin, but that is a, a global setting for all of the users on your server. So uh, just a couple of notes I wanna to touch on real quick. There is an option to turn off self-registration if you don't want just any Tom, Dick and Harry to be able to set up an account on your server. One thing that I really do appreciate about Passable, and it's a simple thing that I really do appreciate though, is that there is an option for light mode or dark mode or blackout mode or somewhere in between. So I like that there are some options there depending on what your users want to do. So then there's the question of, well, who is Passbolt for? And I think for me, it's easier to tell you who Passbolt isn't for. Uh, Passbolt isn't for users who will be easily frustrated by technology. I think they've got a target demographic and they've built their application with that in mind. Passbolt is, as it says on their website, for organizations that take their privacy and security seriously, including Fortune 500 companies, the defense industry, universities, startups, and many others. Now, again, like I mentioned earlier, if you're interested in getting Passbolt set up for your own use, there are some great videos out there about getting it set up in Docker. So be sure to check those videos out. 
But with that said, I'd love to know your thoughts in the comment section down below to let me know what you think about the way they're running things and what you'd like to see them do differently. I do also want to thank Yubico for sending over their experience pack of their newest generation two-factor authentication keys for me to take a look at. I will have links to those in the description down below as well. But I think with that said, I am gonna go ahead and wrap this up. Um, so again, thanks for your time. I always appreciate your support and I'll talk to you in the next video.